in terms of effectiveness, there are a few considerations that I want you to keep in mind, and I kind of started mentioning some of them, but let me, let me pick up and try to be more specific. It's critical, and, and this is your role. Um, you are gonna set the tone of your group, correct? You have to, and you have to set the tone from the get-go, from the very beginning. That opening moment is essential to how the group is gonna build up in the future. I'm not, I'm not saying that if something didn't go well, well, you're doomed you know, for the rest of the week. I'm not saying that. You can always repair, go back and forth, but you can create so much stability in health from the beginning in the group that it's gonna mark you know, what's gonna go with it. One of the things is the norms. And when we talk about group norms, we're talking about the rules for conduct that inform what attitudes and behaviors are expected during the group. So going back to your point, Kaylee, and, and again, correct me if I'm wrong, I, I think this has to do with you from the very beginning being able to create a level of expectation in the group. So for instance, when you say, well, this is a group where we're gonna share. Share is a big word. I mean, it's really short, but it's, it implies so much. Share what, how much, how deep can I go, how superficial can I be, it's too much. It's your job as leaders to, to really say what is it that you're looking for. So this is a place when we're gonna talk about who we are, where we're coming from, how long have we been Christians, we're thinking about uh, Summit Connect groups, um, what is our expectation in regards to being part of this group, how committed do you feel to this group? Do you, do you feel that this is a group that I should be part of uh, permanently? I need to be here all the time or I feel kind of the freedom that this group, I'm gonna show up when I can. You need to say those things ahead of people sharing those things because then they are listening and they are starting to see, okay, this share word is starting to shrink and it's starting to be more focused. And, and of course, assuming that everyone is paying attention because sometimes people are not necessarily listening. And you might need to repeat yourself several times, but assuming that that's happening, the word starts to shrink. And then they start to see, okay, all right, so it sounds like this is not regroup anymore. And we may even say that. If you identify one or two people that are coming from regroup, Sometimes probably they don't know that, but if you do, to be able to say, you know, we wish that Summit Connect group, Connect group will become more like Regroup where you can share so many deep things. This is not that particular place. And then we go back to the mission of those particular groups. In this group, we are looking for this, different from Regroup that is looking for that. As you continue to set that up, people are gonna feel more comfortable more capable of choosing where to go and not to go, right? Um, they may still be confused. They may still do too much. And then one of the rules that I, for instance, um, uh, always, always try to make sure I remind my group of is to say, okay, for now, I want everyone to share for one minute. And you know what? I, you need to help me with the clock. So I, I ask somebody, most of the time, that person that I identify tends to take too long, that's the person that I choose to keep track of the time. <laughs> and they become so great at it, so good. You know, in, 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 in that way, you are, again, shrinking the share word, and you're helping people to have a structure. Some people don't like that because, you know, I, 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 and this is what I heard in other places. Some people say, well, then you're limiting the Holy Spirit or, you know, and, and you're not helping people to really feel free. So I actually have found the opposite response. When people know specifically how long they have, what is expected, they tend to be more free. And I can see how the Holy Spirit actually uses that because we're going to have more time later to continue to expand on things that are proper to the group because I'm also protecting the other members. Not only this one, but everyone in the group, making sure that everything is gonna be helpful to everyone. That's what we're looking for. So one way um, is, is the rules. You know, What is it that we're expected to do? What behaviors are, are appropriate for this group? What do we need to do? What we're not supposed to do in these groups? And, and that sometimes can be so hard. You have to spend that time prior to the group, make sure that you know exactly what the rules are. 
let's say that you come up with a list of five, six, or seven, or 10 rules. You share those with the group, everyone is on board, you know, you go back and forth with them, everybody's clear. Then you ask the group, am I missing a rule? Is there anything else that you guys think we should make part of what we're doing here, how we do it? You will be surprised. They may actually come up with very interesting rules. As a matter of fact, I have found groups that are more rigid than I, than I am, that are more on top of things than I had to say, well, you know, that sounds good. I don't think we need to be that strict, though. How about if we are a little bit more flexible? But I like the idea. And, and find a way of still valuing that somehow, validating what they are saying, but not necessarily to follow if it is too much for the group. But you need to find a time to share those. In some groups, I don't know if regroup will be more like this, but in some groups, you need to repeat the rules every time. One, you may have a new member who never heard those. Two, remember a lot of the members that come to regroup actually have a problem with rules. That's one of their issues. They don't know how far they can go. They don't know how to stop. They actually feel that they had to defy those rules. Therefore, we are helping them to learn how to, in a healthy way, navigate rules, respect rules, and see the value of having rules. Um, I learned how to swim when I was like 21, so shame on me. Yes, you can say it. Um, I was afraid of the water. <laughs> oh, okay, thank you. Thank you, appreciate it. <laughs> I, I, I didn't learn. I am the oldest of seven. So it's a very Latino family, as you can see. And I remember one time I was in the swimming pool, and we, of course, I was just like this. You know, and my brothers were there, uh, and they were all swimmers, everyone in my family but me. So I said, you know what? This is embarrassing. I'm, I'm the oldest. I don't know how to do this stuff. It's time for me. So I, I asked one of my brothers, I say, okay, I got out and said, can you, can you teach me? Because I need to learn this stuff. I cannot continue to do this thing. And he said, oh, of course, he said. And he just threw me to the deepest part of the swimming pool. That was his, his teaching thing. I hated the guy. But as I was going down and starting to swallow some water, I realized something. I realized that that swimming pool had a bottom. And I was thinking, oh my, God, I'm gonna drown here. But then I thought, oh, I wanna touch that floor and I can push myself up. I don't have to die in this thing. Somehow, this is a second, you know, it's just going very fast. I realized I can save myself. And at that moment, somehow, the whole mystical idea that the water of the swimming pool was gonna swallow me disappeared. I started to feel control over that particular thing, and I learned how to swim after that. But, but the point is this. When you know that there are boundaries, that there are limits to something that can feel overwhelming, then you get a sense of control over it. And then that brings peace to you. It's a sense of competence. I can really manage this. So when we're working with people with addictions, addictions is, in part is, is a lot of that. It's a lot of the idea that I lost control. And I need this, let's say, substance, it could be a behavior, to somehow numb the fear and the other emotions that come from my lack of control, correct? I, I need it. But if I can somehow learn that there is a level of control that I can manage, I start to feel competent, then I don't need the drug. I don't need the behavior to numb anything because there's nothing to numb. Rules, believe it or not, help to promote that idea. Somehow you are creating that idea in them. We have a bottom of the, in the swimming pool. You can go, you could go down as much as you can, but eventually you're gonna touch the bottom and you can pull yourself up. There is a sense of ending. Okay, good. You know, finally, I think I can do this thing. I may swallow a lot of water. I may hate my brother, you know, and I hated him for a while, but I can, I can manage this. I can manage this thing. Rules help with that. We need to. We need to somehow come up with very healthy uh, ways of creating the rules. If we had more time, I will actually ask you to come up with rules right now, but let's see. Let's see how we do later.